I don't know what to say. Um, I get the whole, we want to be feminist, ang like the whole angle, right? We want to be feminists, and we want our point of view respected, portrayed, and validated, right? But here's the thing about that. When you're feminist, ideals or principles or your doctrines start to infiltrate things that it should not infiltrate, it's becoming a problem, all right? Now, I'm willing to take a certain amount of feminism, I guess. I mean, take, for instance, Gamergate. When Gamergate happened... Some woman, or Anita Sarkeesian or whatever, started complaining about how women are degraded in video games and how they're always portrayed as damsels in distress, right? But then here's the thing about feminism. You, you want respect as what? As a strong, independent woman, or whatever it is that you want. But then at the same time, you have girls cosplaying as the the this uh, chick from Game of Thrones. I don't even remember her name. Or that you have them cosplaying as these same scantily clad women in these video games. A another point on that subject is you want to be feminist, right? You want to be a feminist, you want to stand on your own, you want to be validated based on what's up here, right? You don't want people judging you on your body parts and whatnot. Except every time I turn around, I gotta look at a webcam girl, or a Kim Kardashian, or an Instagram model, and now... I just don't get it. It's almost like you want to have your proverbial cake and you want to eat it too. That's the thing about feminism that just makes me so angry. You want you want to be treated as an equal, but then you also want to have a 10-year rule where you could take half a guy's money when it comes time for divorce. It, 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 it's, it's honestly at this point, it's becoming the hypocrisy is getting to me. All right. Now, first, it was video games, right? Because we're, when I'm, what I'm talking about here are the last man bastions to get away from this crap, right? But no. A couple of feminists decided that they wanted to infiltrate that too. You wanted to infiltrate video games. And now, what does Arnita, Anita Sarkeesian do now? She's trying to profit off of being a consultant for what? For video games that she detests because they degrade women? Now she's trying to profit off it? Not to mention she scammed all her... Kickstarter uh, supporters that paid her to make videos and she never even made the whole series. And then, I left that alone. But then, you want to bring it into the comic book movie genre. And then, you have Brie Larson coming over here with her crap about her using the movie in the role of Captain Marvel... Of so, as some kind of platform to push your feminist agenda. And then, and then, you have Kathleen Kennedy, a card-carrying feminist that wants to take Star Wars and completely make every male character, even the legacy characters in the franchise, complete dopes 
and then make the female characters all strong and independent, even in The Last Jedi, talking to the male characters like they're little boys. Now, I'm not even a big fan of Star Wars, and I noticed that. But that's not even why I'm making this video. The reason I'm making this video is because I grew up with a movie. Alright? While all these little kids were watching Star Wars and all this growing up watching, and I don't blame them for watching Star Wars, I'm sure, you know, you know, it's a great franchise, whatever. It influenced a lot of people, it broke a lot of new ground. But me in particular, I was a big fan of this movie called Robocop. Okay, now this movie for me was a movie that I would come home every day, even as a kid, and watch over and over again, not even knowing why I liked it so much. Now, if I had to guess, I'd have to I'd say that it was because I thought as a kid, I also like you know, before I grew up, I was heavy into video games, and I was obsessed with the game, this game called Mega Man, which Mega Man was basically about another cyborg too, whose creator got killed, and then he had to go kill the guy who killed his creator, or whatever, but I'm getting off a of topic. I'm saying that I like that movie. I guess I like that video game. Maybe for the same reason I like this movie. I guess the idea of a cyborg on film was appealing to me. And even as an adult, I like the movie because it's ultimately a revenge story. And it's a story where the character, the protagonist, whose name is Alex Murphy slash Robocop, actually goes to an actual arc where he has to go after the people who actually killed him. And throughout this process... He has to, you know, come to terms with what he has become and what became of his family and what he lost in the process of becoming Robocop. And by the end of the movie, you see that, okay, at least he, he has come to terms with it. He's half man, half machine. He's somewhere caught in between the two worlds. But he has to deal with it. And then, I'm on YouTube one day, and then I come across this video, and it's um, a so-called analysis slash review of the movie RoboCop by a movie reviewer named Maggie Mayfish. The official name of her channel, I believe, is um, Film School with Maggie Mayfish. Now, feminists can say some pretty, I'm sorry for saying this, but you can say some pretty dumb crap, alright? You can twist things to a point where you bring up issues that men never even thought about. I read an article in the Mary Sue where a writer, I'm not going to say her name, but basically uh, roasted Tony Stark calling him a womanizing alcoholic and I don't know what else. When from a man's point of view, he's an inventor slash industrious industrialist. And yeah, he's a, and he likes the ladies. And, and it's just so night and day the way that men view things, and the way that women view things, and that was, in, I was apparent with Anidia Sarkeesian and her whole rant about how women are mistreated and objectified in video games, and why do they always have to be saved? Let me tell you something, Anita Sarkeesian, most of the guys that play video games are men, and men like the idea of a, of, of a woman like, ever since the first video game Nintendo made, Super Mario Brothers, it was about a princess 
who needed to be rescued, and the man wants to be there to rescue her. It's called chivalry, something that you killed with your goddamn doctrine. But you keep on. Again, I digress. Because what I want to talk about is this movie RoboCop. Now, I didn't think it was possible to make RoboCop into a movie where this cyborg, this manly figure, can be made into a potential transsexual and a subpar man whose own family questions his sexuality as this Maggie May suggests. I'm going, I'm not going to play any video or anything like that, but we'll listen to some audio so that you can hear for yourself what she's saying about what her take on RoboCop is. So let's listen. She conspicuously moves her arms in a way that's totally different from the other take, and her tone is softer. I really have to tell you. Is this memory corrupted? Or is Murphy rewriting his memory as a version where his wife accepts him for who he is? Then, after cutting back to Robocop's visor, in a series of shots that recalls the scene where Lewis confronted Robocop about his true identity, we see a memory we haven't seen before. And unlike the Halloween memory, which is prompted by a photograph, this memory is new to us, unprompted by sensory input. This female face fills the frame, mirroring Robocop's face. She says is a pretty odd thing for a character to say in a Paul Verhoeven movie, known for being melodramatic, satirical, and cynical. If, as this series of shots suggest, she is Murphy's mirror, then symbolically Murphy is saying to himself perhaps accepting the female identity he's been desperately resisting up until this point in the narrative. We cut back to Robocop, this masculine robot, now shrouded in darkness. The next time we cut back to the wife, we, as Murphy, enter her mind and pass through her body. This female face, or head, or mind, is a passageway into something else, into an empty home, a blank slate or a new beginning. Then as Robocop continues through the home, a man's face on a computer screen asks, Hey, have you thought it all over? Have you interrogated your own identity? After passing through the compassionate female face, Robocop smashes this computerized, mechanized, masculine face. <laughs> um, symbolism. So is Robocop simply the story of a cop whose body is destroyed and then rebuilt as a machine? Or is it the story of a person whose marriage was already falling apart? A person whose son has already questioned their masculinity? A person who attempts to become the epitome of masculinity and ends up embracing femininity? A person who navigates their own identity while society and corporate America violently force a hyper-masculine ideal on him? A person who, after being forced into a construction metal body, rejects the product name and programming that's been forced on them, a person who repeatedly identifies with women. It's you. To wrap things up, Carmilla Morel writes, Cinema is very good at expressing universal ideas, which gender is not. Since one's own gender is so internal, personal, dynamic, and not often entirely understandable or consistent, where transgender viewers often feel the most seen is in body horror and sci-fi films about robots and aliens. Transness on film isn't lingering genital shots and staring sadly at one's own nude reflection. It's processes. It's the horror and abjectness of wrong body and the turmoil and excitement of transformation. It's the physical, mental, and emotional complexities and contradictions that can be plumbed much more effectively by both filmmakers and audience with symbolic and allegorical means instead of literal ones. And honestly, I wouldn't be so adamant about this reading if I hadn't just watched Verhoeven's Basic Instinct, which is a story of a woman who literally needs to hide her phallic object to avoid persecution because society doesn't approve of her personal relationships. You don't have to read Robocop this way, but if Donkey Kong can say, Why not add Robocop to the mix? 
What can I say? That this is what this is what I'm. Th only a feminist could extrapolate such a ridiculous theme from a movie of a man. This guy was. I remember thinking he was one of the. This is one of the manliest movies I've ever seen in my life. All right, I, I mean. That's like saying John Connor w w w w identified as a transsexual. I mean, where the heck do you feminists get these themes from? Where, do, where does this come from? Do you have this desperate need to make everything that men think is cool and just... You, Feminized? What? What? I, I don't get it. I I don't. Where did that theory come from? RoboCop visited the house at a certain point in the, in the in the movie to relive his memories, to go back and try to figure out if he could remember anything about his family. And when his wife came up to him and said that she loved him. She said, she said, I really have something to tell you, right? And she made it look like it was going to be something dire. But if anybody could see that right a second later, a smile spread across her face and she was joking and she says, I love you. You know, and she takes it as because and, 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 then, and then right after that happens, of course, because it's just a memory of her, it fades away because she's not really there. And she interprets this as, this as he's going through the, the faded uh, memory because he's really going inside of her. Because he's really going inside of his female self and merging with his female self. What? And then at the end, when he comes, leaves the house, and the computerized man says, "Have you waited out?" She 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 interprets that to mean, "Have you weighed out yourself as a man? As your as as you weighed out your sexuality?" I. I I, I, it's 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 just silly to me. I, I mean, like I said, I understand that uh, you you feminists have your point of view and everything, but I just I I don't know where you get some of this stuff from. And I say that to say this: when it comes to Star Wars, when it comes to video games. When it comes to anything that men like, if you don't like it, stay away from it. Don't try to infiltrate it and then make it your own. Because the truth is this. You don't like it anyway. It's almost as if you want to infiltrate it now because it's mainstream. Video games, anything that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, anything that men use to es as escapism, it's like you want in on it or something. And I don't know if I'm off on that uh, theory right there, but I mean, if you don't like it, just stay away from it. And stop you, you just stop injecting this feminist doctrine in, into into things that we enjoy because we don't view it the way you do we don't view women in video games as I, I my favorite video game growing up was Final Fantasy 8 and the most beautiful thing about that about, about that video game was the relationship between the female protagonist and the male protagonist. And yes, she was constantly in danger and he constantly 
needed to save her. Did that make her a weak person? No. It made her a regular woman who needed help. She was not a warrior. She was not a bad arse or whatever. All right. And she didn't need to be. The beautiful thing about the video game was that she was just a woman and that she got caught in a situation she didn't expect to be caught in and she needed to be helped. And this guy, the protagonist, who loved her, went to great lengths to try to save her life. And it was a very beautiful thing. But now... In today's culture, you can't make video games like that without people like Anita Sarkeesian saying that it's it, 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 it's degrading the women. It, and, and honestly, I think that's that's ridiculous. So I guess I'll just leave it at that. I'm not gonna say I'm anti-feminist, but I, there there are just some places that this potent almost toxic, mean, feminist doctrine does not belong.